I'm the calculus professor and today I'll be talking to you about properties of power series. In problem number 25, I'd like to find the radius of convergence and the interval of convergence for the following power series. We have the sum of k minus 1 to the k times k to the k divided by k plus 1 to the k. All right. So um, typically, when I'm trying to find radius of convergence and interval of convergence, I'm very tempted to use the ratio test. But in this particular case, I really think I'd rather use the root test. And the reason I'd rather use the root test is notice that every single guy, every single term of this thing is um, raised to the k power. So if I take the kth root, this is going to make life extremely easy for me. So I'm going to use the root test in this case. And so what I want to do is I want to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of, well, I still need absolute value of the kth root of x minus 1 to the k times k to the k divided by k plus 1 to the k. All right, the kth root of all these things to the k, I get limit as k goes to infinity of absolute value of x minus 1 times k divided by k plus 1. So all of those kth powers just fall off when I take the kth root. Okay, so now what? Well, now I'm taking the limit as k goes to infinity of this. I've got a k on top, I've got a k on bottom, so this is just going to be the coefficients out in front of the k. On bottom, the coefficient is 1. On top, the coefficient is x minus 1. So this limit is just the absolute value of x minus 1. And the root test tells me that my series converges if what I get out of the root test is less than 1. So I'm interested in this guy. When is the absolute value of x minus 1 less than 1? Well, absolute value of x minus 1 less than 1 is the exact same thing as me writing that minus 1 is less than x minus 1 is less than 1. So I could add 1 to all sides of this inequality and I'd get that another way of writing this is 0 is less than x is less than 2. And right now I could tell you what the radius of convergence is because this interval has length 2, half of that distance, the radius, is 1. So my radius of convergence in this case is 1. If I want to know the interval of convergence, I'm very close. I have this interval 0 to 2, but what I don't know is, well, what about the endpoints? What about if x is 0 or x is 2? So let's take a look at one of these guys. Let's say that x is equal to 2, okay? And we'll go back to our original series and we'll say, okay, what if x was 2? If x is equal to 2, then I get 2 minus 1, that's 1. What's 1 to the k? I guess it doesn't really matter what k is, 1 to the k is just 1. So I just get k to the k over k plus 1 to the k. Alright, so <clears throat> if x is equal to 2, then I get um, the sum of k to the k over k plus 1 to the k. And I want to know, does that guy converge or does that guy diverge? Well, another way of writing this is it's the sum of k over k plus 1 to the k. And so I'm going to use the divergence test on this guy. And the reason I'm going to use the divergence test is I think that I can show that this the limit of that sequence is not zero. So I'm going to move over here, let me erase, and uh, I'm going to 
try to use the divergence test to show that that sequence right there does not go to zero. So I'm going to look at the limit as k goes to infinity of k over k plus 1 raised to the k. Uh, if I wanted to, I could write this as the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over k plus 1 over k raised to the k. So I just flipped this thing and put it down on the bottom. I haven't really changed anything. But now I can simplify this. So this is equal to the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 over, this is 1 plus 1 over k raised to the k. But that's nice because this is one of the limits I know. Limit as k goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k to the k, that's otherwise known as e. So this is just equal to 1 over e. 1 over e is not 0. I was using the divergence test and I said, if I can show that this thing's non-zero, then when x equals 2, this thing diverges. And in fact, it does. Because I used the divergence test and I showed that it didn't come out to zero, then when x equals 2, this thing diverges. So I know that it diverges at 2. What about at zero? Well, if x is equal to zero, then what I'm dealing with is the sum. Uh, I erased it, but what it would be is it's minus 1 to the k times k to the k over k plus 1 to the k. So it's basically the same thing except I ha it's alternating now. Is it going to make any difference that it's alternating? I could use the alternating series test at this point, and if I use the alternating series test, what is it that I would want to test? I'd want to test the limit of this guy without the negatives. But that's exactly what I just did, and it didn't come out to zero. And so the alternating series test would tell me that when x equals zero, this thing diverges by this exact same limit it diverges by the alternating series test. So it does not, it diverges when x equals 2. It diverges when x equals 0. So what is my interval of convergence? My interval of convergence is 0 to 2, and it doesn't include 0, and it does not include 2. If you like it better, you could write your interval as uh, open parentheses 0 to 2 if you would prefer. Either way, it's just fine.